Hi, this is the summary of your chapter 4 from the textbook. Predictive Anal Analytics 1, Data Mining Process, Method, and Algorithm. Starting from this chapter, we enter the area of uh, data analytics that we do not call that analytic in the past. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, this pretty good chapter talked about a very old, very, well, you can say old because it has been uh, more than 20 years in the uh, information science uh, field that to do predictive uh, anal analytics. Uh, the method is called the data mining. We all want to know more about the future, uh, but the true reality is, uh, or the question that we need to ask is, how much we can predict the future. Data mining uh, can be viewed as a uh, summary of um, all the technique that we have been de developing for the past uh, 50, 60 years in uh, data analysis that we uh, come up with this um, a new terminology called data mining. And uh, the result of the data mining is usually something we call knowledge. And the knowledge can be used for predictive purpose. Data mining is actually a uh, combination of many uh, fields, including statistics, management science, which is uh, what your professor's training is from, information system, database data theory, artificial intelligence, machine learning, and uh, visualization, some other uh, statistic and mathematic related uh, field. Regardless of um, which method or which field the data mining technique is coming from, or the so-called uh, predictive analytic is coming from, it's all based on one simple rule. The uh, simple um, idea is that if you can identify some sort of pattern, then you can use that pattern for prediction or I use a more sophisticated word here to say extrapolation. Try to extend your understanding into something that we cannot understand. On this particular slide, which is not included in your textbook, I put a cover of a book that is one of the book I read uh, quite some time ago. It's actually a book about uh, investment, financial analysis. So the title of the book says, It's Raining in Brazil by Starbucks. It's written by a, um, um, well, actually, uh, Peter Navarro. He is uh, currently the uh, White House economics advisor for uh, President Do uh, Donald Trump. Uh, this book is interesting because um, it actually pinpoint one important thing that human being has been trying to do for a very long time. Uh, including the behavior on the stock market. Everybody wants to make money on the stock market, so we try to develop some sort of a theory, and using theory to derive uh, or try to predict uh, that some stock will go up or go down. In this case, that uh, the assumption is that um, Starbucks buy a lot of coffee bean from Brazil, and uh, so the cost of the coffee bean will be a very important ingredient in the uh, the model to determine how profitable Starbucks is on the market. So if Brazil is raining, it means that uh, the, the coffee bean production will go up. So that particular assumption goes to that uh, uh, causal model uh, derived that we have this uh, pattern called uh, if it's raining in Brazil, stock um, uh, coffee bean price goes down, then Starbucks has lower cost. So the Starbucks profit will go up. Yeah, consequently, that the, the uh, uh, stock value will go up. So that logic provides a prediction of some sort so that we can use that particular pattern uh, for future prediction. From this chapter, you will learn um, a few, actually a few category of uh, method that you can learn from either data mining or something what we call predictive uh, uh, an, an analytics. Uh, either way that you will uh, need to familiar yourself with those terminology so people are referring to those methods, you know uh, the purpose of those methods are actually try to um, explain something or predict something uh, using the knowledge that you generate from a certain method. So exactly what kind of method are used in data mining or predictive uh, analytics? Uh, there are 
basically four type of them. The first type is association, or simply you can use the, the terminology correlation to replace that uh, uh, terminology. Uh, it also have some sort of prediction model. And most of the prediction model, including a lot of um, econometrics model, are derived from a very um, basic concept from regression that we learn from statistics. And we also have uh, something in statistics, what we call the uh, non-parametric method. And these non-parametric methods uh, derive the, the, uh, the type of uh, uh, pattern, including cluster and uh, sequential relationship that we use to predict the future. With that understanding, your textbook presents a very good taxonomy or classification method. Try to explain to you or at least give you some ideas about the terminology and method that we use in uh, various, uh, various kinds of uh, data mining. Now the picture on this particular slide is a little bit small, but uh, if you cannot read it very well from the, from the video, you can always go back to your textbook slide or uh, go straight to the textbook to the particular page to find figure 4.2 uh, to refer to this classification. I will personally spend a little bit of time on this particular picture. So your textbook derive or actually classify the method of data mining into prediction model, association model, and segmentation uh, method or model. Under prediction model, you have classification, you have regression, you have time series, um, uh, under association, you have market basket analysis, link analysis, sequence analysis, and in segmentation, you have uh, clustering and outlier analysis. Uh, there are many terminology you need to sort of like understand and get a sense out of it. And uh, as, as usual, on the lecture part, we will not go into too much detail. And uh, for those of you who are interested in a specific method or want to go deeper into data analytics, I'll encourage you to kind of dig a little bit more on each one of this method. And uh, from the uh, classroom or semester grading or learning perspective, I will uh, sort of like force you to learn a few of them, including uh, regression and correlation or association method. But on other method, uh, that we will understand some of the basic assumptions and uh, how these methods will work, uh, that should be sufficient. So the first thing on this particular picture you need to know uh, is that on the right-hand side, rightmost column on the picture, we have this called the learning type. And this is how the uh, mathematical model learn or try to derive uh, knowledge from data. And these learning type, uh, including basically our divide into two, two basic types. The first one is called supervised. The other one is called uh, unsupervised uh, learning. The main difference between these two are that uh, the supervised learning is a very classic traditional uh, hypothesis uh, development and testing method. So when you learn from your statistic class, which uh, you might feel a little bit confused about how to create hypothesis and uh, derive from your knowledge from previous um, uh, learning, then, then you come up with some sort of a, a data set and use that data set to test your hypothesis. That method of process uh, statistically is uh, now considered as supervised learning. On the other hand, um, unsupervised learning uh, is uh, going to the other direction. We do not have a specific assumption of uh, what we're gonna be uh, uh, predicting or uh, uh, visualize in our result. Instead, we have some sort of a vague understanding, okay, uh, this particular group data can be classified into different sort of like group, and uh, these um, uh, unknown situation, we can somehow understand them by giving them some sort of like correlations or uh, some sort of a, a ranking. And these type of uh, analysis is not that uh, clear. Uh, and you can feed data, and from the data, we see the pattern. One of the, um, the most human-oriented method we try to do this is, uh, for those of you who have taken financial analysis class, you know that a lot of this uh, trader 
or financial trader stock, uh, they are uh, looking at the stock market and try to get the profit out of it. They usually look at the um, financial chart, the daily moving average, and uh, compare one stock to the other, compare the stock to the market. That particular practice analysis, a lot of time does not have a specific goal there, but they are looking for some sort of a pattern they can grab their eyes. And once they identify those patterns, they can use that particular pattern to do a little bit decision support in uh, selecting stock or uh, make decision on, on their portfolio. So those type of analysis is called unsupervised um, uh, machine learning. And nowadays with uh, the mathematical model that we have at, at hand, we can do a much better job in that kind of unsupervised learning already. And again, uh, like I said earlier, there are a lot of terminology and method you should be sort of familiar yourself with. And um, uh, it will be a good idea for you to sort of like uh, look up the Wikipedia or uh, Google the terminology, try to find out some of the acronym. Many of these methods are present in this picture that already given you the full name. Decision trees under classification method, neural network, or sometimes we call artificial neural network, support vector machine, uh, KNN, well, say for example, KNN is a method. Uh, you need to know sort of like their, what, what it represents, what is the rough idea about uh, KNN. KNN, if you search in uh, Google, you will find uh, that particular terminology stands for K nearest neighborhood. Even though you do not know uh, the exact mathematical model behind the KNN method, but you know that it's something about neighborhood. So it's actually something that related to how you uh, put things together. So their value, their attribute, their property are sort of similar to each other. In the way that you can say this is um, um, uh, using our, our layman's term, uh, profiling will be a good uh, way to describe. So it's something like a, a, a sophisticated profiling method uh, using number, try to group things together so you can create classification. That's KNN. And you have this uh, na na naive uh, Bayes uh, algorithm. That is from your statistic. We know that uh, the Bayes uh, algorithm, I mean, Bayes theorem that uh, you know the past probability, you can use the past probability to predict the future. And GA stands for generic algorithm. It is an algorithm based on the genome analysis and how you use a random combination of genome analysis and understand the parents and somehow uh, intr introduce some, some uh, sort of a randomness into the combination. You can predict the future a little bit. It's kind of like uh, if you look at a, a person, well, actually a couple, uh, if the both couples are very tall and uh, you'll, you'll predict that their offspring will be, well, uh, tall as well. If you have uh, seen a couple that is uh, a tall, mo mother is very tall, but father is uh, average, you can still probably predict, you know, very likely, but uh, less likely compared to, you know, both parents are tall. Uh, if mom is tall, then uh, it's likely that the kids can be taller. And um, uh, also that if you see a couple that the mom is short and uh, the dad is tall, and based on our past experience or generic analysis, we know if the mom is short, that um, your kids are more likely to be short than tall. And so those patterns, once you can be generated, even though it's not 100% prediction, you get a certain sense of uh, what the, the uh, offspring will, will look like. What is the pattern of a combination will show up in the future. So very quickly, you uh, are familiar with the terminology of uh, GA, KN, and, and we have this AN is actually stands for artificial uh, network, uh, artificial neural network under the regression method. And SVM is the same as support vector machine that I described earlier. Uh, uh, the next category in the time series analysis, most of the time series analysis in the financial world, you, you probably learn it's coming out of a smoothing average. And so we are using the two days, four days, 10 days smoothing average using some sort of a alpha um, the, uh, the, uh, factor, weighting factor to come up with some sort of prediction in the future. That is used a lot in the tech uh, financial uh, prediction as well. 
And so in the same category, you have this uh, ARIMA or ARIMA. It actually uh, stands for uh, Auto Regressive uh, Integrated Moving Average. You can still look up all those terminology uh, anywhere in Google as well. But it's uh, an, uh, you can see that as a sophisticated uh, um, moving average method. And that should be uh, uh, good enough. And following category, you have uh, a lot more method on the market basket analysis. A, pri a priori uh, 1R, 0R, these methods are used in market basket analysis. In the two categories down below, you have this method called the uh, sequence analysis. Uh, sequence analysis is kind of like a, a similar to time uh, series, but in a, uh, a different way. And we have this uh, FP growth. FP stands for frequency um, progress frequency frequency pattern so uh, you are looking at the pattern or looking at the uh, sequence of that pattern to predict uh, in the future sort of like a um, uh, categorical um, smoothing average analysis in some sort so for each one of those uh, for those of you who are uh, interested in data analytic uh, I would encourage you to uh, do a little bit of research yourself try to familiar yourself at least uh, from the understanding of your your side to to know uh, what are they what they can do for you but one thing uh, to keep in mind is that regardless of all how sophisticated these methods are uh, they serve to similar purpose and which is either try to come up with some sort of formula or knowledge to predict the future or try to some come up with some sort of a, a category or classification method so you can group thing into reasonable group and those are the nature of uh, data mining in general and as your professor um, assum the assumption is that I should know all of them but the uh, the reality is no I know probably uh, on the slide you're looking at uh, the method that you uh, described from your textbook I'm probably familiar with about 50% of, uh, of those and uh, each one of them will probably take a uh, three-hour seminar to discuss and work on a problem to learn. And uh, among all these, I'd like to give you one example of market basket analysis. A very famous market basket, basket analysis uh, in the MIS field has been published uh, about uh, 20 years ago when Walmart was trying to become the uh, number one on the uh, retail market. And uh, as you probably know that uh, um, Walmart was a company that uh, starting with uh, um, transportation fuel. They have their own trucking company. And they, uh, when, when their transportation fleet or trucking fleet, uh, tried to, when they try to optimize their, their fleet, you know, uh, try to make sure that every truck they load a product from one place to another is fully loaded. They come up with uh, uh, many operation management sort of a mathematical model try to optimize their operation. So in the process, they become the lowest cost um, competitor on the market. They use the same method in retail business. And one of the, uh, the thing they try to do is, of course, try to make sure that everything they sell in their store um, is has the lowest uh, uh, cost so uh, with a uh, reasonable margin they can uh, so thus make out the uh, profit so after uh, Walmart has been become bigger and bigger and one of the difficulty is that they already have achieved a certain uh, optimization of their cost structure in terms of their their product they're trying to sell so uh, they have to find something else and one of the theory uh, was discussed back then was that they want to make sure that uh, Walmart is the uh, the one-stop shopping place for most of the American family. So if you go to Walmart, you will buy everything you need in that particular week and without going to other store. If, so if they can capture you uh, in that particular store, they will just uh, sell everything to you. So that is the, that was the goal that they try to achieve. And they also very quickly find out a problem. And because you know, humans are not uh, very organized and we tends to uh, sort of like forgot to buy something so when we go to Walmart say we forgot to buy a jug of milk and uh, well the next thing you know is 
uh, well, I'm not going to be driving another two miles to Walmart. I'll just stop at the uh, gas station, spend a little bit more money to buy that milk. From the perspective of Walmart, uh, they are losing that particular sale. So uh, the idea is, that can we uh, identify a method to make sure that uh, the customer coming to uh, Walmart, we can make sure they pick up everything they uh, need uh, without for forgetting everything. So uh, they have developed a uh, mathematical model called the market basket analysis. Uh, in this particular, uh, the, the, the reason the uh, method is called ba market basket analysis is because they try to study the association of the product people buy in one shopping cart, a physical shopping cart in Walmart. So they, uh, and they, once they, you be able to identify certain things, you know that the people tend to buy certain things together. So based on that, the knowledge they learn, they can put the product uh, into similar aisles or right next to the other. Uh, so one of the patterns, very famous, uh, uh, written in, in some academic uh, uh, case analysis is that Walmart discovered that uh, people buy soft drink. They tend to buy a lot of paper product, including diaper. Now, is, are there any, any relationship between the diapers and the uh, uh, soft drink uh, purchase? Uh, there, no, there's not. But uh, somehow the uh, people tend to buy uh, things together. Uh, what is the reason behind that? We don't know, but we know it uh, belongs to the same market basket. So uh, Walmart makes some adjustment uh, at that time, put uh, diapers and the paper product next to the soft drink. And uh, that particular move increased their, their sale to a certain percentage uh, in, in terms of uh, increasing sale. So that proves that uh, there's certain value to that particular analysis that become their their famous uh, cost reduction and make sure their customer is uh, focused uh, or now that we call the customer relationship analysis or customer relationship management, if you want to call that. So um, to summarize this particular slide, uh, we have seen so many different methods uh, for associations and for pattern identification for classification. All these uh, methods are derived or uh, come up with to, uh, to de develop some sort of a knowledge that we can use to associate with one group to the other. And your textbook did a, a very a, does a very good job in uh, give you a lot of example using uh, in different method in different um, different data mining techniques and uh, popular in this becoming a mainstream some a lot of time we even call this artificial intelligence already in today's uh, environment so the uh, the the company large enterprise, they all use this data mining method to come up with something uh, that you think uh, as an intelligent. Uh, say for example, the uh, Amazon will use your your browsing pattern, try to predict or try to uh, estimate or try to, um, well, try to guess what you'd like to buy. So they will recommend you product. So those kind of mechanisms are uh, very popular nowadays. And they are actually all data mining even though it looked like some sort of artificial intelligence. As you can see, all these data mining methods can be applied to customer relationship management in retails or in, uh, in even in a wholesaler, banking, financial analysis. Uh, we can use that in the uh, retail logistics, manufacturing, quality control, maintenance. We use that in brokerage, uh, brokerage and security trading. Uh, many of these um, recent job opportunity in data analytics is actually coming out of a uh, uh, financial area or uh, or healthcare. So the insurance fil filing, for example, the uh, um, the uh, healthcare uh, insurance um, um, fraud prediction, for example, are a very good example of what people are using most in data mining field. And it can be also used in many, many different other fields. The homeland security, travel, entertainment, uh, and so on and so forth. Over the uh, past 20 years or, or so, data mining has been developing into a very matured um, data science field. And uh, when in the mature field, like you know, quality management, or human resource management, health management, strategic management, 
we are usually talking about a process or some sort of a methodology to to follow so we can uh, acquire best practice uh, we can uh, use some sort of principle to guide the uh, uh, a good practice to ensure quality so in data mining field that we also have that kind of uh, methodology as well so uh, uh, to be trained as a uh, business student you should uh, at least uh, familiar yourself with some of the methodology using data mining just like you know any other methodology you heard about uh, total quality management uh, Six Sigma uh, in the uh, quality field. Uh, the in in data mining we have uh, uh, very popular the following three methods: CRISP uh, DM or cross industrial standard process for data mining. It is a method actually used a lot uh, from uh, by the European country. And the second one is uh, SEMA, S E M M A or sample exploration mod modified model and SS. And finally, we have this knowledge discovery in database. If you compare the three of them, actually you can find uh, the process in our slides uh, from textbook. Uh, they are very similar. They are uh, uh, also very similar to something we know as a problem solving process. So if you search on problem solving process somewhere on internet, you will find similar process or cycle people are talking about. So very typically that we have um, uh, CRISP uh, DM or CRISP for data mining. You have one, two, three, four, five, six, six different process. You start by uh, defining the problem and the model building and testing the model and deploy the model. And very similar to your uh, other method like uh, quality control. You have to identify the problem, collect data and verify the problem and improve the problem finally go back to the cycle so similar uh, processes going on here and one interesting thing about the uh, uh, data mining process as we have mentioned already in previous chapter that is that in data science or in data analytic the majority of the work that we are doing in uh, in data uh, science is actually uh, data preparation here as well 85 percent of this time is on data preparation SEMA model uh, is developed by the uh, the large company called SAS. Uh, even though we are not using their software, but you know, you know, SPS and SS is uh, our two traditional uh, big, uh, what do you call it, big brother in data and, and, and analytic as well as in statistics. And they present this model very similar to the CRIS model. They have uh, uh, five phases. It, it, it's now turning to a, a cycle and it has a feedback, feedback loop. So uh, that uh, turned out to be a very reasonable problem solving process as well. Knowledge discovery in data uh, in databases, similarly, is a, uh, uh, a model building, data preparation, model building, and verification, and finally execution type of model. And of course, other than the three different methodology described by your textbook, there are many other methodology, but most of them, again, like you, like I uh, mentioned to you, it's a problem solving cycle of some kind. And uh, some of them are more specific, uh, more, more sophisticated. Some of them are more simple, uh, but they're very similar. And uh, as you can see from the uh, Katie Nugget uh, website discussion or, or statistic, uh, rank number one is the CRISP DM. So uh, if you somehow get into the organization, uh, try to implement some sort of a government governance uh, structures or process in data mining, then uh, you can probably read a little bit more on that particular methodology. The remaining of the chapter, your textbook talking about in much detail about uh, different uh, data mining method, uh, uh, basically in two different ways. One is a classification method, the other is sort of like association type of method. Um, there are many difficult terminology, uh, I, will, I will kind of have to warn you, um, but uh, let, let me try to grab a few key points and try to explain those terminology to you. Uh, the first thing is that when we are looking at a classification method or some sort of a, 
uh, quality or how good is your classification uh, in that particular sense. Uh, we are uh, talking about different measurements to evaluate your, your classification. These including accuracy, speed, robust, robustness, scalability, uh, and uh, interpretability. So when you are reading this textbook or uh, reading the slide and taking the quizzes, try to just keep in mind these terminology are just some measurement. Uh, you can actually uh, use this uh, concept, try to derive your, your own measurement. Uh, as long as you fit uh, that, uh, that's you know correct. For example, the uh, the hit rate in uh, the accuracy analysis. It basically says, okay, if I throw a uh, um, a group of um, things I ask the computer or the model to identify, then uh, how uh, what percentage of the uh, the answer is correct one. And one typical uh, problem that has been presented in the artificial intelligence community is every year that in artificial intelligence community, they have a competition called the machine vision competition. In that particular competition, that is uh, uh, people are trying to uh, identify object from uh, given a digital picture. So uh, say for example, if I give you uh, a bunch of animal in, in 1000 picture, so uh, and your uh, the method you de develop or the the algorithm you come up with you go into that 1000 picture and try to identify them to see if you identify them correctly some of them are cats some of them are uh, are, um, are dogs uh, so uh, the higher number of your machine you can predict correctly the better your algorithm is that's called a hit rate right and as as far as i know that uh, this competition become very competitive nowadays and um, the picture they are giving to you are a lot of time cannot be discerned by human being they give you uh, more like a pitch dark uh, forest picture and ask the machine to identify what kind of animal you can find in that particular picture even though our human eye cannot see those darkness and the machine now is actually smarter than human being to identify uh, those uh, pictures so thinking in that direction, so uh, how uh, a, a model or method can uh, better accurately predict your or create category uh, that will be uh, good enough for, for our understanding. So in the future, when you try to work for a company, maybe they try to classify customer into different interest group, or they try to predict a particular customer will buy or not buy a particular product, and that will be very useful. Uh, for example, if you are a sales a car salesperson and you look at the person coming to your door and you try to predict uh, well if this person is going to buy from you or not and because if this person is not going to buy from you uh, they may waste you a lot of time and you may lose the opportunity to serve other customer so it's very important to to know who is the important customer that you need to spend your time on if you can collect uh, features and uh, um, some, some sort of model to, uh, to put them into different importance group, then you can do a better job as a salesperson. And again, these type of um, um, uh, experience, you can say that sales experience are derived in the past by human uh, ability that we as a human being, we try to come up with some sort of predictive model by ourselves, by observing people. So based on your experience of observing people, you come up with some sort of a conclusion. Now we rely more uh, by the hard data that observed by machine. This particular slide is very technical, uh, but I'd like, like to uh, stop at this particular uh, slide a little bit, talking about how good is the, uh, the prediction uh, based on our concept of uh, how do you uh, evaluate a, uh, a data mining method or data mining uh, algorithm. It's called a confusion matrix. And uh, it, it, the more you look at it, the more confused, confused you are, I believe. Uh, me too. All right. But there is something that I like to kind of draw your attention to it. And uh, to map uh, this particular uh, confusion matrix into something you probably already learned, but feel totally lost in there. Uh, the, the two things that we use a lot uh, in today's um, world, uh, ever since data analytics become important, uh, it's something what we call type 1 error and type 2 error. 
Uh, type one error is this thing what we call false positive in, in your uh, analysis or the quadrant here. And type two error is the uh, the false negative that we're describing here. Knowing what type one and type two error is, establish yourself as a uh, as a uh, um, at least as a, uh, a person who can communicate with data scientists uh, to solve the problem you try to deal with. So simply saying, uh, let me try if I can make it uh, very simple. False positive is uh, basically you have some sort of uh, assumption and uh, your data proven that is uh, correct, but unfortunately that is incorrect. So say for example, if you have a theory that says uh, the uh, parents, both of them are tall, so the the offspring will be tall. And you collect data, you find, well, it looked like the 100 couple I collected, collected uh, uh, they do have a relatively uh, uh, taller uh, parents. But uh, uh, afterward, people told uh, tell you that the data you collected, the kids are not there, are, are not uh, given by the parents. It's made up data. Uh, in that particular case, that you have something what we call a false positive. Uh, because you know that's uh, uh, the sample set is giving you that result. On the other hand, you find something that you overturn, but it turns out to be true. This is called a false negative. Depending on the hypothesis and uh, uh, the uh, testing you are you are trying to do, and the false positive and po false negative both have a significant um, impact to the to the phenomenon you try to predict. More specifically, uh, there are well, your textbook give you one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight different uh, method uh, that you, or technique that you can be used for classification: decision tree, statistic, statistic analysis, neural network, support vector machine. We have learned that already. Case-based reasoning that you use a lot in the in the, the company strategic uh, study because there are not a lot of uh, uh, data that you can you can collect from from uh, company strategic management perspective, Bayesian's uh, classification uh, coming out of the the Bayesian the theorem, uh, generic algorithm we talked a little bit about earlier, and rough set. One one of the things I um, not so agree with the textbook that when we are looking at the uh, classification is that uh, the textbook put cluster analysis into some sort of a special category, but it is actually uh, some method of a grouping and uh, classification as well. The best way to understand uh, cluster analysis is to look at what class, uh, cluster analysis do in a picture. Figure 4.13 gives you a very good understanding about what cluster analysis is. So basically you have uh, in a space of some sort, in this case will be a two, two dimensional space, but in the true mathematical model, it's much more complicated than this. But um, uh, just in the two dimensional space, if you see there are uh, patterns of uh, or a scatter point of uh, data or object in your, your space, you try to put them into groups. And there are many methods that you can put them into group. And the method you're looking at in here is called a K means cluster algorithm. Uh, it, it generates a few points. The, the K is the number of groups that you try to provide, usually given by the, the person that try to conduct the analysis. Say in this case, we try to create five groups out of this data. And so the, uh, uh, the statistic tool or the, the uh, algorithm will try to put these five points into uh, some ge uh, geographic uh, locations so that you can generate the uh, grouping based on uh, how close other points is uh, uh, is related to that uh, particular point you are you are, are creating so based on this uh, five point you see on the on the uh, first step they generate one two three four five different color of group and these are the uh, color of the group on average has the nearest distance from the point to the dot, the k dot that you try to uh, classify. And that method is called the k mean cluster algorithm. But most of the uh, 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 clustering algorithms are similar. You have a bunch of uh, dots uh, based on their algorithm and assumption, they will come up with different grouping. So once you come up with some grouping and you can um, 
Now do something with the grouping. And one of the interesting things that, that we can do is, for example, um, in marketing, we have this concept of different generation in terms of a consumer, X generation, Y generation, millennial generation. Can we somehow come up with a confirmation of this uh, generation difference? That can be done in a cluster analysis. Finally, uh, it's actually a very useful method. Uh, this is a method uh, we're going to be using in our uh, semester technical tutorial. And uh, the association rule of mining, uh, including market basket analysis we talked about earlier. And uh, uh, we're going to be using regression analysis. The basic assumption of association rule of mining is that we can identify some sort of a, a, a causal relationship or relationship that can be described in um, in this format. In this format, example, something uh, derived or cause some other thing. If you can come up with this association, you can usually do a very good prediction. And nowadays, uh, classification tool, the decision trees, or generic algorithm, or uh, artificial neural network, all these uh, algorithms including even cluster analysis and basic analysis are all becoming a standard package in the popular software tool, including our SPSS that we use in this particular course. It's also standard in, the, in Python language, in R software, SAS modeler, and so many other uh, software. So uh, there's really no need as a business student to know the detail of uh, how these um, uh, methods are derived or used, but you need to know how they can be applied to the problem you try to solve. Um, with the, uh, the scope of our class as introduction course, we can not really get into too much detail, but we will use uh, your project and uh, the regression analysis as an example. So you can apply regression to build some sort of prediction uh, model. Uh, for, from a learning perspective, it will be a good idea to know uh, what is a marketplace look like when we look at the software that is used on market. And, um, and we have done a little bit already in our semester to, uh, to look at the market by uh, looking at KD Nugget website. And this particular slide gives you a very good summary of who is winner, who is the uh, uh, most popular vendor in terms of the tool. As you can probably see on the on the uh, picture here, number one here is R, number two is Python, uh, number three is SAS. And I believe the number has changed already. And I believe this particular picture was uh, taken from either 2014 or 2018. Uh, R or Python and R, uh, Python is actually going uh, a little bit higher than R already. I'm sorry, the number three is SQL. Uh, so. And uh, from the learning perspective, if you are a uh, MIS student, um, then you probably want to spend a little bit more time on uh, SQL. As a business student, please look at number four, what you have on the slide. Number four is Excel. Yes, Excel. The good old Excel spreadsheet is still uh, the most popular data mining tool in the, uh, on the market, especially for medium to smaller size company. Sometimes even larger company uh, is using that tool as well. And uh, I have a relative uh, who is working for um, uh, Yahoo, now is part of uh, Verizon. Uh, and she, is, um, she told me that, yeah, they, they use um, Oracle as a database, but most of the time what they are doing is they are using Excel to generate a report for their, uh, for their manager. So uh, that is uh, the uh, chapter four, we have the basic understanding of uh, predictive and uh, analytic. It does derive from many of our previous field, many other courses you have uh, exposed to, but you are not really known. You are learning uh, data mining, for example, production operation management, for example, uh, uh, financial uh, management. All these courses actually have teach you some uh, method for building predictive model already. Until next time, I'll talk to you in uh, another topic of uh, predictive, uh, predictive analytics.